I'll walk you through how to composite an image or document onto a surface using a four-point perspective transformation. With the first example here, I want to place an image onto the television screen and blend it in appropriately. I'll go out to the file browser, then drag drop this JPEG file into photo. Now, before letting go of the mouse button, I'll hold Option on Mac, Alt on Windows, then Release. Instead of placing the image at its full resolution, this will switch to the Place tool, and I can now drag the image out at a much smaller size. This saves time, as I don't have to zoom out and scale the image down. I'll now want to perspective transform this layer non-destructively so it fits the television screen. I'll go to Layer, New Live Filter Layer, Distort, Perspective, to add a live perspective layer to this placed image. And I'll zoom in, then position each node until the perspective looks correct. I can then close the live perspective dialog. At any time, I can revisit the perspective transform by clicking on the thumbnail here, which is useful if I haven't quite managed to line the corners up correctly or if the base render changes and the position of the television is different. Selecting the image layer, I can then use a blend mode such as screen to bring through the reflective detail of the panel. To take this a step further, I might then want to replace the image entirely. With the image layer selected and the move tool active, I'll see the replace image button up here. I'll click this, and rather than use another bitmap file, I'll choose an Affinity Photo document I've been working on. The content is different, but the perspective transform remains in place. With this placed document, I can click Edit Document up here, or double-click the document thumbnail on the Layers panel to open it in a separate tab. I've got different lighting setups of the same render here. I'll show the top group then close this embedded document down, and the changes will reflect immediately in the parent document. If you place PDF files, designer documents that use artboards, or publisher documents with multiple pages and spreads, this process is even quicker, as you can dynamically switch out the content being displayed. I'll show you this on another example. I'll go out to the file browser again, and drag drop this PDF, onto this mock-up document, remembering to hold Option on Mac, Alt on Windows, before letting go of the mouse button, so I can drag the new layer out to a smaller scale. As before, I'll add a live perspective filter. I can also use this option on the Layers panel in addition to the top menu approach. And I'll drag the four nodes into position, covering the hand for now. I'll mask this out next. Once I've closed the dialog, I'll then want to temporarily hide the PDF layer and select the background layer. This is because I want to make a selection of the page and exclude the thumb, so I need to select the layer that contains this image data. I'll then switch to the Selection Brush tool, enable Soft Edges on the Context toolbar, increase the width, and brush into the page to quickly make a selection of it. Now I'll select and show the game on PDF layer and add a mask layer to it. Then deselect with Command D on Mac, Control D on Windows. Like with the previous example, I'll then make sure I have the placed document layer selected and the move tool active. And this will present me with the artboard option up here. I can click it to access a drop down of all the available pages. Then I can simply switch the page being rendered on the fly. This can be a huge time saver for quickly auditioning different pages for mock ups or even multiple revisions of the same page. And there we go, a couple of examples of perspective compositing in Affinity Photo. Thank you for watching.